um, board board meeting. I'm your, I'm your presiding officer for this evening, Saranda Purcell. I'm joined by my colleagues, um, David Perez, Richard Derrick, Michelle Cushville, Grant Yandy. Um, tonight on the um, agenda, we have three items that we'll be uh, reviewing. Um, this uh, conference is being held via um, WebEx platform. Please note that this is a virtual meeting being recorded to comply with public law and transparency, and it will be available for viewing on Bar President Adams' One Brooklyn channel. So we'd like to thank the members for joining us this evening and taking their time to adjust the schedule for a Wednesday night board, um, board, board meeting. I will first like to see if we're able to establish a, a quorum in the room in order to handle our first. Uh, well, first, I want to make an amendment to the agenda for tonight. After we do the minutes, we're going to go into a public hearing for a vote on the Department of City Planning, Open Restaurants, and Sidewalk Cafe text amendment. And then we will go into the resolution regarding health and fitness text amendment. So that's how we're going to carry the program for this evening. So we're going to switch it, um, the items around. So Michelle, uh, can we see if we have established a quorum in order to do acceptance of the minutes? Community board one. Yeah. Community board two. Community board three. Richard Flatow, chairperson here. Community board four. Camacho here, present. Community board five. Community board six. Community board seven. Community board eight. Mr. Weatherspoon, Chairperson. Community Board 9. Community Board 10. Present, Josephine Beckman. Community Board 11. Community Board 12. Barry Spitzer. Community Board 13. Community Board 13. Jeff. Yeah, I see him. I'll I'll just mark him here. Community Board 14. President Stephen Cohen. Community Board 15. Teresa Stabo, present. Community Board 16. Community Board 17. Joan Alexander Dean, present. Community Board 18. Council Member Levin. Uh, this is uh, C CB 13, Jeff Sandler, present. Thank you. Council Member Levin. Council Member Reynoso. Council Member Combo. Council Member Cornegie. Ian Fullerton for Council Member Cornegie, present. Council Member Diaz. Council Member Menchaca. Flynn for Council Member Menchaca, present. Council Member Lander. Council Member Eugene. Council Member Amprey Samuels. Kim Robinson for Council Member Amprey Samuel. Council Member Barron. Council Member Brannon. Council Member Yega. Council Member Lewis. Christina Wilker, present. Council, okay. Council Member Mizell. Uh, Jonathan Aline, present for Council Member Mizell. Council Member Traga. And BP's office. Serana. Serena, you're muted. Give me unmute myself. Yeah, um, I, I, I marked you present. Yeah, uh, present, yes. We have 16. That's why I have two 16. So for purpose of the meeting, we do not have quorum as we require 18 co to conduct business. Um, as we do not have quorum, 
for this particular meeting, we cannot do acceptance of the, me of the minutes. And in addition to that, um, we will not be able to move forward with the meeting for this evening. But in the light of that, maybe a few members will jump on. I would like to um, hand the floor over to Richard in regards to, uh, to provide two updates. One is with the fresh amendment, just to let you guys know that it passed last month and the status of that. And um, in addition to that, the health and fitness um, resolution and the, the changes. Um, so Richard, are you there? Yes, so the city planning commission had their hearing and their uh, vote on those items, on the health and fitness, and on the um, the uh, sorry, uh, blanking on a second. Fresh, uh, <laughs> fresh. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so th that's off to the city council now. Um, today as well, the open restaurants proposal, uh, and we do have Ben on from city planning. Uh, the commission was scheduled to vote this morning on the open restaurant proposal. So all proposals are advanced to the city council. Uh, and I sorry, believe, Richard. Yes, they did. They did not vote on open restaurants. That's tentatively scheduled for the 17th. So. Okay. Okay. So I appreciate that update. So there still is a window if we're able to get a quorum tonight to way into the city planning commission in advance of their vote for the open restaurant proposal. Uh, but the other items going to the city council, I believe November 18th is when the council will have their hearing on this matter. So if we're able to get a quorum tonight, um, then we would still have the opportunity to at, at least weigh in to the city council. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, let me see. I'm just checking to see if anyone else had confirmed for this evening. And Richard, in the event that um, we don't fulfill the requirement for a quorum this evening, and our next meeting is December the 7th, um, what would be the next step for the board board? Would the so, opportunity then yeah. be, would the boards have to just, you know, uh, follow up with their own recommendations themselves. Yes, uh, certainly the the draft resolutions. We have, that... we have, Madam Chair, we have twenty seven. How how is that? We don't have a quorum. Um, we only have sixteen uh, members. That means we have a public hearing on the books, and the public hearing is for the open restaurants. So because of that, we do have members of the public who are present tonight for a hearing. Oh. But uh, uh, all right, none of the elected officials representatives are on. Um, I could we could check again to see if we miss anyone. You know, so, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of disheartening that all the time when we had things on our agenda, we don't have quorum and this community like ours, especially mine, suffer because of things that are being pushed under the table and, 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 it's, and it's disheartening. It, it really is. It's kind of sad that our voices are not being heard and we have board members that are not coming or elected officials that are not putting them and their agendas going forward in hours that live in this community is getting kicked to the curb in regards to that open uh, a restaurant law. We need to push our agenda forward and we need to cut this crap out that's going on because it's kind of sad and it's disheartening that we got, don't have a quorum and people volunteer, then they shouldn't be in the position they're in. Cause I come all the time and I come and I, I try to do my due diligence and be there. I'm in a meeting now, I'm my executive board and I'm on here. So I'm dedicated to my community. It's kind of disheartening that we getting things and when things come to the, to, to the board, the first thing they say is, well, the community is, no. No, that's absolutely not true. And we don't want no one to push things under the rug. I'm just and, and we know, so and Mr. Camacho, yeah, I understand your your frustration and I, I feel it too as well that we have these items on for a, a few a few months and we're and here we are again without the full body of the board. Um yes, we had to uh, amend the date of the meeting um 
due to the holiday uh, formal uh, not work date yesterday. Um, the date was slated on the calendar for the whole year in advance, and representatives do know that they are allowed to send a represent someone on their behalf to attend. And under so, the, and under so this the is one. Charter, yeah, and by, yes, and we're required and by city charter. They're mandated to meet, and we're mandated to meet once a month. Right. And by so that city mandate charter, we Mr. meet. Mr. Camacho, please Mr. Camacho, speak. Yes. So yes. By, and by like city to. charter, we conduct our meeting once a month accordingly. And we notify our representatives to attend once a month accordingly. But uh, in following with um, the bylaws, if we do not have a quorum, right, um, then it's hard for us to really, besides if we had a presentation on the on the agenda, which wouldn't require a vote, we could definitely do a presentation, but we can move forward with a, with a full formal meeting necessarily on these items. Um, with the restaurants, all we could basically give at this point, unless anyone else join us, is a uh, update um, on that particular resolution. And the board board is one avenue, right, um, for recommendation. And but also, your individual boards can make recommendations on these items. Hopefully, uh, through board board and the resolutions that we have, it'll give you a sense of uh, how your board wants to move forward, or maybe the information here will be helpful. Um, at this point, that's the only uh, avenue or caveat that I could, I could I could give in regards to moving forward on these on these particular these particular items. So I don't think anyone else has joined us. I could do a double check. Since you said, um, I believe it's probably members of the public that are here for the, the chat to sixteen. Tonight. Is Sarah Anna sixteen came is up there? On, yeah, it came up on the chat. Okay, so community board sixteen, are you here? Sixteen. So I'm here. Hi. Okay. So now we're at. So we're now we're at seventeen. Okay. Uh, I, I did get a confirmation. Someone, anyone here from CB2? There was a confirmation I received that someone would be attending from CB2? Yes, uh, Dorothy Thompson Manning for CB2. So that's that's um, 18 now, so. Okay. And uh, before we go on, just want to note that we have Dylan on from city planning. So if there's anything Dylan wants to share regarding the uh, Commission vote that got sent on to the council, whether there was any changes or not, or whether it was uh, approved as uh, the application was circulated to the borough board and to the community board. So, if Dylan could weigh in briefly. Uh, um, and Richard, just correct me. Are we? Are you? Are you, are you dealing with? Are you speaking about fresh? Or are we open restaurants? Uh, talking about fresh. Are you talking about? Which, which, we're talking about fresh. Uh, okay. So you know what? Okay. Yeah, so for the purpose, if we're on fresh, and since we have Dylan on, um, we can move forward with, with fresh. Granted, everyone will be staying on this meeting for the remainder of the meeting to make sure we, we keep quorum in, intact. Um, before we go to that, Rich, I just want to backtrack. Um, minutes were sent out uh, for October 5th. I would like to, um, uh, minutes were sent out prior to our meeting to all members. Um, do anyone have any corrections to the minutes from October 5th? Uh, yes, uh, yes CB14. Yeah. Um, there's a print on the vote for the officer spoke on CB14 position construction. Uh, the chair of CB14 tells me that that was, was not CB14. I wasn't present at the meeting, but. That's that's what I was told that that's not accurate that it was CB fourteen. That was that was not CB fourteen. Okay. I was told. Teresa Scavo, CB fifteen motions with the correction to adopt the minutes as printed. Second, Richard Sato, Chair, Community Board Three. Okay, all those in favor. All right. Say aye. aye. Hi. Okay. okay. Any op any opposed? Any abstain? The motion carried. The minutes from October the fifth have been approved. That concludes our um, our first item on the agenda. We'll now move on to a second item of the agenda, which should be our resolution for health and fitness uh, text uh, text amendment. 
Um, we do have representative from the Department of City Planning to, ask, to answer any questions that we may have in regards to this, um, this item. Um, do any members of the board have any questions in regards to the health and text amendment? I would note, um, Richard, you could correct me, but I do know there was a ch we did have a change in regards where we had included community board tw uh, 12 and 17 um, for, uh, for a special, well, um, to retain a requirement to attain a special permit in those particular boards. And that was the only amendment that was made to the health and fitness uh, text amendment. And the last version of the vote was as a rejection of the zoning text, although subject to these conditions with the several exclusion areas and several other modifications. Okay. Richard, so could you please just specify the exception areas. Um, I have to look at the document. Um, bear with me a moment. Unless Ronnie, you're able to pull up that document faster. Um, what it is the so it so the motion to approve the fresh proposal with the modifications to retain the requirement to attain a special permit for community board 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 18, uh, 12, and 17, expand um applicable apple application to C1 zoning district, classify as high intensity use have an area of a thousand square feet or weight and exercise equipment through requiring acoustic engineer, engineer verification of compliance, uh, modification of the definition of a massage establishment to spell out what defines supervision so that it can include the state limitation of not more than three associates and that such associate have limited state, uh, state permit that the supervision be on premise. For when massage establishments seek to be community facilities, use according to the diagnostic definition modification to classify that such massage establishment requires on-premise supervision up to three associates limited state permits that that hours operation not before 7 a.m or after 10 p.m as a means to address operation in residence district modify modification of c1 local retail district to restrict maximum size of a fitness facility to 200 square feet when below or next to residential use, modification to require the acoustics engineer to be state licensed and that verification of noise and vibration to go beyond design, designed to include construction assemble. So that was the that was the uh, amendment to the resolution, and I, the vote would be. Uh, the vote that we're putting on the floor tonight will be a uh, objection with approval of these um, modifications. So we're not approving, we're voting, the vote will be not to approve the text amendment with modifications. So the modifications are included, are submitted and in included because some of your, the boards have included some of these modifications, which then end up becoming a part of the resolution. Okay, Serana, Teresa Scavo, but this has already gone through city planning's um, some yeah. sort of a vote. Is this what's it getting approved? So Dylan is on, so Dylan can weigh in, but I just want to also say it doesn't fully matter what city planning approved because the final determination is with the city council. And as long as the borough board's uh, suggested conditions are within scope, the council could modify and send it back to the city planning commission to incorporate these any of these ideas. Got it, Richard. Thank you. And I'd be happy to give a, a brief update about where where the project is in the process. Um, so we, this did go to the city planning commission for a vote on October twentieth. Um, and and the commission voted uh, 10 members, uh, 10 commissioners in favor, one opposed uh, to support the, the citywide text amendment. Um, as as Richard said, it, it did not it, at that point did not include these recommendations from the, the Brooklyn Borough Board. Um, so it, it voted to um, remove the, the special permit for gyms and spas and massage 
um, across the city and, and allow these as as of right uses. Um, and the, the only the only commission modification um, was a slight change to the wording of unlicensed physical treatment establishments, which is basically the definition in zoning for for a business that offers unlicensed massage. Um, so it continued to um, uh, restrict any unlicensed massage from occurring anywhere in the city, um, but it, it strengthened that language to make sure that the Office of Special Enforcement um, has has adequate tools within zoning to uh, to enforce these kinds of uses and, and shut down any businesses that are that are engaging in unlicensed massage. Um, so it is now being it's on the agenda for the City Council Zoning Subcommittee on December seventeenth. Um, and so, so that's that's really the next step in the process, um, and and city council would be considering both the vote of, of the city planning commission, but but obviously other information that comes in uh, from uh, from the the public hearing that's occurring within the the zoning subcommittee, uh, and and also presumably information that the Brooklyn Borough Board uh, provides um, before that time or I should say before the city council votes on, on the item. Okay. Um, so with that being said, are there any questions from the, the board members or concerns? Um, and would anyone would like to uh, put a motion on the floor for a disapproval of the text amendment with the modifications? Um, Saran, I have a question quickly for Richard. Mm -hmm. It's Barry. Go ahead, uh, Barry. Yeah, uh, Richard. Yes. Yeah. Um, so my question is that uh, we were added that the Brooklyn Borough Board seeks to retain the special permit in Brooklyn Community Boards 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, and 18. So we were added to that, but to none of the modifications. Um, my question is, um, why we we weren't added to the modifications, or is that enough that we we still seek to retain a special permit? So again, the goal was for you to retain the special permit. That's why you were added to that list. And the only difference would be that the terminology would change to the new terminology for your special permit. And right now in C1 districts, which you may have a few, the special permit is not even allowed to be attempted. So moving forward, if this were incorporated, your C1 commercial areas would be eligible to apply for the special permit. And then you'd have the opportunity to make a determination to the BSA uh, on C1 districts, in addition to the districts, you already make such recommendations. But again, the council needs to take this on as something that they want to deliver for you. Okay, no, I was just looking at the modifications and which doesn't necessarily fall into the category of uh, the, the, the broad, you know, seeks to retain special permit, but then it goes, it goes, it goes on to itemize, um, alcohol rubs, body rubs and stuff like that. And R1, R2, and retail and on, um, and on. So I was just wondering if. Yeah. So most of the remainder of the changes in the borough board resolution would be for the areas that would no longer be subject to the special permit to at least strengthen an as of right condition compared to the city planning proposed text. Thank you very much. There was a motion on the floor, but um, I would allow if anyone had any additional comments before. We continue. Okay. Uh, this is Jane Alexander Bacardine, Community Board 17. Uh, I'm just yes. trying to, to, to understand. So the motion now is for disapproval of the text amendment? Uh, right. e so e yes. So it's a, a disapproval of the, te the text amendment with 
modifications that we are submitting. And these modifications stems from our office modifications from the that we see from the the board that has submitted to us via communications letters, um, and that's where we came up with the uh, with the modifications for that text amendment that we still like them to be on record. So by disapproving it, does it adjust the request that was made by the individual boards, or what exactly are we disapproving? The text amendment or the text amendment ad amendments? You're, so you're, well, well, you're disapproving, in theory, the proposal of the Department of City Planning in general. However, there's an understanding that many times when you may not want to pass something, at the end of the day, it's still going to pass. And the idea is that you would hope some people believe that bodies later on in the process, whether it's a city planning commission or city council, might pay that much more attention to the recommended recommended changes because it came in with a disapproval than if it came in with an approval. And we would try to vote this initially as an approval. Obviously, there was less support. There was more support for a disapproval with conditions, but we lacked the quorum at that point. Teresa Scavo, I motion to disapprove with modifications. Joan Alexander Bakardine seconds that motion. I thought we already had a motion on the floor. Yeah. It, so you could only have one motion at a time on the floor. Oh, there's already a motion? Well, then yes. I listen. There's He's a motion on. to uh, yeah, so, disapprove. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so the motion, yeah, so uh, there was a motion to uh, disapprove. Uh, to dis oh, so there's a motion to disapprove the text amendment with modifications, right? Um, can I can I have a second? You already you had a second already. Yes. Please call the who, question. Who was this? Question. Question. Pardon me. I have a question. Is this no? This I. Is this in regard to the open restaurant or or we still on a fresh? No, this oh. is health. This is business. So I no, we're doing health and health and fitness. Okay. Thank you. It was, I believe it was already moved and seconded. So. Yeah, if you don't have any other questions, if you could please have call the vote, call the question. I know. So just for the record, I had, I had asked, could we have a motion? Right? Yeah. You had a, somebody right, did I, move. And you have the names of Bravo who uh, made the motion? No, no, that was no, we didn't have, no, I had called for a motion and then, uh, to Teresa, right? Yeah. That's the only person. I think. Are you? Confused? I think we're doing. We're talking, he's probably speaking about the minutes from before. I don't think the motion was second. Okay. Well, yeah. So I don't have a second. Seconds it. Okay. If it is required, the first, motion wasn't, second. Second. The first motion wasn't second. Okay. So, so John Bacadine second. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll just do a full for the record. We'll do a roll call. So, so just, remember, just for clarification, this is to vote to disapprove um, the text amendment, uh, health, e physical culture. Text yes, amendment. for clarification. Yeah, this is to disapprove the text amendment with the mod with the modifications. Right. Um, as you remember, as from last meeting, we put this towards a vote. And the consensus from the board was they did not support the particular text amendment, but we did want um, our voices to be heard and at least with the modifications to at least be considered or seen or be aware of. Um, if you get into nuances of members of the board who necessarily felt like, well, uh, at this particular junction, it's like just, you know, saying it's okay to do it without, you know, some people felt different ways about the modification for the disapproval. But we would like to have some way in at some point in the process as a board um, and as the board, since the consensus was a clear disapproval of the health and fitness from the body um, based on the vote, but want to include the modifications that came from different community boards as well as our office is now being as a disapproval for the text amendment with modifications to be on record from the board board. 
Is that clear? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank sir. you. Um, so, Mich Michelle, can you just do a, a formal vote so for sure. the community boards? No problem. Community board one? Yes. Community board two? Yes. Community board three? No. Community board four? No. Community board five? Community board six? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? You said community board five? Michelle? Community board five? Okay. Community board six? Community board seven? Community board eight? Yes. Community board nine? Community board 10? Yes. Community board 11? Yes. Community board 12? Yes. Community board 13? Yes. Community board 14? Community board 14? No. Community board 15? Yes. Community board 16. Community board 16. 16. Community board 17. Yes. Council member Levin. Council member Reynoso. Council member Combo. Council member Carnegie. Abstain. Council member Diaz. Council member Menchaca. Council member Menchaca. Council member Lander. Council member Eugene. Council member Amphrey Samuels. Yes. Council member Barron. Council member Brannon. Council member Yeager. Council member Lewis. So many people don't yes. show up. Council member Mizell. Yes. Council member Traeger. BP. Um, yes. Okay. So thirteen. Yes. Yes, we have you. Thank you. You're welcome. So we were missing a vote from sixteen, and according to the chat from Viola, that uh, Janice is on. We didn't hear from Janice. One, two, three, four, five. We have nine. Yes. Wait, nine for council no. community board and four <laughs> council member. One abstain. Hold on. Uh, no, Michelle. Go, go, give me one sec. Okay. Uh, for the community boards. One, two, nine. Five, nine. Confirm. Yes. Um, nine. Uh, for the elected officials representatives. Four. Four. And one abstain. Um, okay. And we're missing the CP16 vote. Um, Maybe tomorrow is Janice there or Viola? Maybe after my hair. We're also missing a Menchaca vote, also. Menchaca? Yeah. Oh. You want the random ones have to go to Carvel. Menchaca? Hear me? Yes, now I hear you. Is it a yes or no or abstain? Yes, it's a yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Michelle, that. So that's five, five yes in the council member and nine yes in the community board. Okay. 
Um, so the oh, so the the motion carries. Right. So the motion for disapproval of the text amendment with modification um, carries uh, for the formal record. Um, that concludes our business with the health and text amendment. Thank you so much. Now we don't have to. Thank do you. Okay, we'll now move on to our next item, the agenda, which is a public hearing from the Department of City Planning regarding open restaurants and cafe tax amendments. So um, in September, the Department of City Planning came, presented to the board. We tried to conduct a hearing last month. We didn't have the necessary quorum to complete, to continue with the hearing. And, uh, many uh, members of the community and boards have weighed in on um, the open streets cafe. Just give me one moment. and. So we're going to move forward with a formal public hearing, which will give members of the public who are joining us tonight cool a chance to a chance to ask questions formally, and uh, we will begin the public hearing. So last month, representatives of yeah, so over the last few months, representatives of City Planning. Oh, presented to the board regarding open restaurants, cafes, zone, and text amendment proposals. Um, representatives are here tonight to answer any questions. We have Benjamin Huff, Senior Transportation Specialist. Do we have Benjamin here? And do we have someone? Do we have anyone here from transportation? Uh, it's just Ben Huff from uh, City. Oh, Ben. Okay. No problem. Wonderful. Ben, Ben, okay. So, you know, so see. remind viewers, we, we want to remind viewers that if you wish, oh, no problem. One second. We want to remind viewers that if you wish to testify, you must message your host using the WebEx, WebEx chat function. After presentations and questions portion, uh, we will call speakers in the order of the, the chat. Of course, you can always raise your hand. Um, that So we'll begin our formal hearing on the open street cafe amendment do we have any questions let me see if i give one second as we begin the public hearing can you just give us a brief uh recap of where we're at with the, the, with the amendment sure um not too long but just you know yep uh we the open restaurants then sidewalk cafe. yep nothing too long just can a, you hear me can you hear me? Yeah, yes. we can hear you. Okay. Yeah, so the open yeah, restaurant yes, yes. text amendment. All right, I, I'm having some sort of um, delay here, but I, I'm, I'll just go ahead. So the um, we completed a 90 day public review uh, in September 27th. We had our public hearing October 6th. We recently had a post hearing with the city planning commission uh november 1st and um i think it's tentatively scheduled to be voted on november 17th at which point it will go to the city council um so that's the uh, sort of where the text amendment stands do people have questions on what exactly the text amendment is again or any any other details yeah. you want me to fill in? So, mm -hmm. so as a formal public hearing, we'll start off with questions from the public. Do you have any questions from the public from non board members? Do we see at uh, uh, David? Do you see any hands in the chat or any message in the chat from the public? Do we have any questions from members of the board? Or concerns? No, we don't have anything from the chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, CB4. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah, CB4. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we have we have uh, uh, a lot of, a lot of concerns in regards to this uh, uh, open uh, restaurant uh, law cafe. Uh, we're giving we we're giving away our our, our land. We 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 to 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 to, to restaurants. You know this is this is ridiculous. Not, not only that, the officers how are they going to control the outside of the right? You saw how many people one person 
was shot on a restaurant in Williamsburg, outside restaurant. People been robbed in restaurants. In hours, we had people sleeping in there and getting high. And and I don't know what's going on. How are we improving? This? What's going to happen with these places that people live underneath them and they can't sleep at night when they go all night, all day, all night in the street? We knew it was COVID. We knew it was outside. Ain't nobody going to be out there below zero. In the summertime, they're going to be out there Throwing garbage out. You see the garbage how it is now. We having a lot of problems in Bushwick like that. Terrible. So I hope, and I know a lot of people when I testify in regards to that, and we wrote a letter saying we're not opposing that and we don't want that. You know, we we helped them. It was for COVID. Now people could go back and how are they they're not telling us who's gonna be controlling it? How is this gonna happen with the quality of life? What's going to happen? It's going to be the same thing that the noise is going to be in the front and now you got to get a camera or what it is. And then by the time they get out, three, four in the morning, people, we have people doing parties now without licenses and we can't even, how is, how oh. is we allowing so, this? Oh, how is this yeah. Even happening? We need so Mr. Matter. Camacho, oh, I'm going to let you finish your comment. Go ahead. Okay. We really need, we need, we really need to dead this under the water and really need to work with the community in regards to the real basic down, who's gonna be responsible for it. If something happens to me in one of those places that I'm eating, eating is the insurance gonna go through the house or the city's gonna pay the taxpayer dollars that allow them to take this is gonna pay for it. Nobody's answering any questions. Okay, and I, I I don't know if that was a question or just a comment itself, but before, I, um, before we go forward, I just wanted to just kind of state and, um, we do have a resolution, right? Um, that we have drafted. We have reached. Uh, we have received correspondence and co communications from several boards, and the draft resolution that we have tonight um, it calls for a disapproval of the, of the proposal with modification. Um, Community Board Eight conditionally approve the proposal text amendment subject to uh, multiple safeguards. Community Board One Ten Fourteen and Fifteen has opposed the proposal text amendment as well as the committee of CB13. Um, while the resolution supports the need to, allow, to allow, uh, to allow uh, op open to serve outside customers, it believe now was not the time to remove to, now was not the time to remove sidewalk cafes from the zoning resolution, all right? In addition, it calls for the community boards to have a proactive role in the development of the design and operational standards for city for city departments such as small business services, transportation to provide appropriate resources to businesses operating in underserved communities that have been hardest hit by COVID-19, for DOT to establish a public participation process that would enable development of rule to be pro prolongated um, by DOT to include multiple opportunities to weigh in before draft rules and put forth a public comment. And finally, the Department of City Planning not refer to zoning text change for removing the linkage between sidewalk cafe, commercial uh, zoning districts until it until it would be the time that the DOT is prepared to prolong it permanent sidewalk cafes, um, cafe and restaurant seating within the street bed that such text change considered whether in enclosed buildings operate in such uh, operation should allow for seasonal open uh, seasonal open facades based on meeting acoustic standards of city noise code. So that was the resolution that was circulated to board members. Um, that's the motion we'd like to put uh, forward. Okay. Um, Mr. Camacho, I, you had made a comment. I don't know if there was a question with that comment. If there is a question to that comment, you could always chime in. If not, I'd like to move on to, to see any other board members have any questions or concerns or comments. Uh Okay. Do any other board members have any questions, comments, and resolution? Yes, I do have a uh, question. Uh, yes, identify yourself, please. Barry from CB12. Yes. Um, I I just have a question in the resolution. Uh, the last paragraph, it says the Brooklyn Borough Board supports legalizing eating and drinking establishment operations that will best reflect function, functional operations to serve customers outside the building. 
Um, I would like to know what that entails, what that means. It's not, it's, it's just a general statement. I would like to know what that means. So, right now, the way the zoning text is crafted. When you have a front facade, um, it's a completely enclosed building in terms of meeting the zoning resolution, right? As, as a use, right. however, having. There's a sidewalk cafe that you could have already where it's been permitted. The idea that if you're having weight service going in and out of the building, there may be an operational advantage to not necessarily have the facade continuously enclosed. In addition, when you think about some of those takeout places, such as Wendy's, Burger King, McDonald's, there's a side window where somebody could go order and receive their food. So there's an open window situation. So we've had a lot more of restaurants operating where people come to pick up their food and therefore by being allowed to have an open section of the building wall, um, it, it just allows for easier operations. So that, that's a glitch, right? Zoning didn't have that. So we're just trying to formalize, yeah. Talk about the window in the paragraph before that. You say the proposed zoning and amendment modify ZR sections 32411, 3234, 73 to allow for oper operable windows to serve customers. I, yeah. I'm looking at the next paragraph. So that's covered in that one. What what does the next paragraph mean, basically? It, it's just kind of following up more on that paragraph that explaining that the proposal by city planning in that particular section, that it, it's explaining um, the support uh, for that role. And then the other part was, uh, the second part of it was, there are restaurants today that operate, and they have, let's say, French doors, you know, folding walls, they, they operate today. And there are customers who enjoy sitting inside, yet, the walls are open and that's not a legal opportunity. So if you're going to either one, you clamp down and you say, no, we got to stop having these open walls or two, if we are going to formalize that in the future, that it should be formalized in a way where the sound is dealt with, the sound is diminished because you don't want people living above a place that has an open facade for the enjoyment of the interior customers to then be adversely affecting people living above. So where restaurants do have open Understood. today, um, Understood. Maybe, maybe. those two paragraphs at the end do not talk about any any seating outside or, or correct. Right. Okay. Correct. So that, the the borough board resolution is going to be against that. We're talking about other types of like serving outside through a window or uh, or another type, but we're not talking about sidewalk or street cafes or Correct. sitting outside or anything of that in that. Um, in that Correct. Way, right? So one is supporting what city planning is proposing now. That would be the only part of the proposed zoning text that we would ask the city council to pass. We would ask the council to reject everything else. The second thing would be messaging that. There, when it's time to come back, let's say in a year, because DOT now is ready with rules that we've had a chance to look at, that at that time, city planning might consider an additional proposal to see whether it's, it makes sense to legalize these openings that many restaurants have, provided they have adequate noise account accommodations, right? So we're we're dampening the noise, so we're not- and that would be an idea to think about when we would want city planning to come back with their proposal to remove their role in the zoning resolution. Okay. Understood. Thank you, Richard. Richard, Teresa Scavo, just, um, I don't want to be ignorant, 
I'm reading this resolution. It sounds like you want us to approve this open restaurants, open cafes. The way I'm reading it, I am not hearing that we don't want it. Am I reading it wrong? Yeah, we are not approving the text. We're saying the city planning, we want to approve a resolution that denies almost everything city planning wrote, but for the modest piece of allowing the functionality opening to have customers served outside more efficiently. Other than that, we're saying so the city planning, reject the rest. So if they're going to have serving outside, where are the people going to sit down and eat? So it sounds to me, reading this resolution, that this is asking us to approve this city planning open restaurants. No, um, basically under the emergency order, right? We're still living in the emergency situation. During the emergency situation, the idea is to have these openings that exist for functionality legalized. So all it's doing. I so I, I would, the door, the door swing, whatever, uh, a window to pass through food during the emergency, that would become a legal condition. Is so this only does. is this I, only during just... the emergency, Richard? Yes. Yes. So once the once the emergency is over, let's say DOT comes up with good rules that a very limited targeted outdoor seating, whether it be sidewalk cafes, which is kind of a continuation of kind of what you have today, or maybe expanding it where it makes sense to the street in structures that make sense as opposed to what you have today. And you still may have the notion of people coming to restaurants just to pick up their food and not even sit outside. That text would extend beyond the emergency so that in the out years, you know, you want to get your food, you're doing your exchange without walking in the building. You could have your foods passed through to you. You pay, you know, pass through the opening. So that concept would go on permanent, right? Once you get rid of the emergency rules, but the emergency rules, the idea is you're not getting rid of your existing rules until you have new rules we all like. Right, and I think just to add, I, it sounds like some members on the board might be confused. So the sidewalk cafe text amendments, just removing restrictions on where they're allowed. If if the text amendment were not to pass, there would still be uh, you know many commercial areas of the city where restaurants would be allowed to apply for a sidewalk cafe. You just right. said to once, once the emergency. Sessions over. Yes, but you just said the defining term in the city, not the outer boroughs. You see, to us, our sidewalks are valuable and our street. And it seems that restaurants have usurped every curbside parking spot. You could circle for hours looking for parking. These structures are eyesores many not even being used and why are we catering to a restaurant to give them additional seating on our sidewalks and streets so, so let's drop let's drop the notion of anybody setting up a restaurant in the street for the moment right like now as long as you have a commercial overlay many commercial streets in brooklyn because that's where we're concerned about have the right to apply for a sidewalk cafe it's only on certain streets where you happen to have commercial businesses, but you don't have commercial rights for zoning that businesses can have the sidewalk cafe. So most of the sidewalk cafes that existed prior to the emergency rules were legal. Probably all of them were legal. So we do have the idea of many of those outdoor seats you see on the sidewalk before the emergency. In the sidewalk, were yeah. Correct. So even the waiters and waitresses serving people sitting in those sidewalk seats, and again, the notion of takeout, um, 
you know, takeout's been around, right? So we're just helping the functionality of takeout by having the allowance of an opening. We don't have to have a completely enclosed wall for building operation at the exterior wall. That's all that section deals with. Yes, if DOT comes with, with a street solution that works permanently, that can get through the CAPA process in, in the future when the emergency rules are removed, yes, the functionality would also help wait service go in and out of the building to the street if, if and where they're allowed at all, right? That's a process that's still in front of us. We, 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 Somebody in the chat has a question. Oh, yeah, someone in the chat has a question. Um, are you, yes, the, uh, the question in the chat. Um, Dave, uh, are you able to? CB13. CB13, okay. Uh, let me chime in for a minute. There's, there's one issue that's been raised, and that is the environmental issues that these these uh, restaurants that have them on the street, the Department of Sanitation can't go in there to clean up. It's, it's so, the, sewer, sir, the sewer lines, and then we're going to need more uh, maintenance on these sewers. On these sewers, so that also exacerbates I, the flooding, the stormwater flooding, and we don't want. We're I, trying to get from that, so I don't see why uh, the the the. Uh, the these are all legitimate questions, Jeff, in terms of permanent allowance, right? Snow removal is going to be an issue, right? So the exactly. permanent rules have to consider everything you're saying. At least they should consider everything you're saying. There may oh. be streets where it will not make sense to have open streets. There may be structures that are so much different than what has been, been put in place today. We have good examples. We have bad examples. The question is... What examples we, will DOT be sharing with us? As yeah, with all respect, at a nor'easter, and in Brighton Beach, there were businesses that were flooded, and I saw from the the the, the storm sewers, the water's not going because of the water bowl. It's trying to put something, you know, the horse before the cart. We have to get the act together with the Department of Sanitation to uh, try to uh, eliminate. The 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 the, uh, the floatables that are going into the sewers. People died during Hurricane Ida because of this. this that we, many of those reasons. Yeah. Very this is exactly problem. why, Jeff. This is exactly why we're asking to not remove all of city planning's permanent rules until we really understand what the DOT proposal is. So, Richard, again, so us voting no tonight. Okay, oh, can, can you identify yourself? I'm sorry, this is Josephine Beckman from Community Board 10. I just want to really Thank you, Josephine. clarify this because Board 10 voted against this proposal. We feel that um, the Department of City Planning, this action is premature. Um, we, we believe there are really good reasons, at least in our district, why there are ge geographic limitations. We believe those geographic limitations should remain. Um, especially along 86th Street, areas with high pedestrian travel, and w without, you know, um, rules being formed specifically for the streets. So voting no tonight, what we're saying to city planning is we don't want you to proceed um, with any changes to the zoning text until such time that DOT comes up with a proposal. Is that correct, Richard? Except for the pass-through window situation. That's but the, the only exception to what you said, Josephine. Okay, but the pass through window is doesn't you're not passing it through to an open eating area, just allowing the sale of food through a window, correct? You're allowing weight service to go in and out of the building more freely, and you're allowing customers waiting outside for pickup delivery to have a easier exchange of merchandise without walking throughout the restaurant to do their transaction as many people you know did in the past. But Richard, that's else. my issue before. Uh, why are we talking about weight weight service going in and out? Um, if we if we're not talking about uh, eating outside, because sidewalk cafes are allowed outside today, and many of them are lawful without the emergency rules. Okay. 
and again pick up and drop for off. Those, for know. those that have already a sidewalk cafe under the emergency rules, or those who applied before COVID um, through uh, and and they got a uh, sidewalk cafe um, through the proper uh, through the proper way, right? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, we do have a question in the chat from a member of the public, and I know we had an inquiry if any member of the public had any questions. So I hope the board members will engage me. Just let this member identify himself and pose their question. Is it, do you, are you able to add the person, I, Mickey? In? Yes, I, I think that's me. Okay. Great. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Um, I have um, a couple of observations and a question. Um, my observation is that in my neighborhood, we have already during the pandemic condition, this open facade situation. It is like a mosh pit. You cannot walk down the sidewalk at all. It is completely filled with people drinking. It's open with multiple sports bar TVs, um, you know, sports bar TV displays at a very loud volume. I would have I didn't stand there to count. My estimation would be that there were 200 people on the street partying on Sunday evening and afternoon. That is not unusual. It wasn't because it was Halloween. It might have been a little bit worse for Halloween. That is normative now. So my question is, I believe that under the current emergency executive order that Mayor de Blasio has signed, that these open facades are permitted. So my question for Richard Barrick is, why do you need to have a resolution which makes this aspect of the zoning text amendment uh, something that your board wants to affirm? Thank you. And before he answer that question, uh, Mickey, can you identify your neighborhood? Yes, I live in Manhattan. I live in the South Village in Manhattan. We are the we are the worst nightmare that you will be that will be visited upon Brooklyn. So we are. We are the the ghost of Christmas future, or the, boat, the ghost of of Hanukkah future, coming to you from the South Village. It is a nightmare to live here, and I would not wish this on any of my friends and neighbors who live in Brooklyn. Okay, so, thank so you for your question and comment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we first have to separate right the outdoor seating areas. With what's going on right? That is subject to a future rule through the Department of Transportation. And again, our resolution was calling for community board participation to help uh, come up with what might be good examples and not good examples. And I would encourage you to work with your local community board to provide feedback to DOT through this process. That's gonna happen over a year or so. Um, the second thing is the nobody has really gone to the Department of Buildings in the past year plus to file for building plans to have the wall be allowed to be open. Uh, so I don't know explicitly, and, and Ben may correct me, that the resolution from the mayor, the emergency order, allowed businesses to suddenly have these extreme openings. There have been businesses that have been built with these folding walls, garage doors that roll up, you know, they exist. So a strict interpretation of the zoning resolution, that is not lawful operation. And the question is, if that operation should continue, the only thing we're raising is sensitivity to, if that should be legalized, that acoustical effect has to matter, right? You don't want the sound from inside to be such where it's emanating to the floors above if you're going to even allow open facade operations. You want to have it done right if you're going to legalize the operation. Thank you. Thank you for that. I have a follow up. If I I, I'm, I'm Mickey is only uh, comments for the public is 3 minutes. As a is four, three minutes up or, did, or did Mr. Barrick use the rest of my 3 minutes? I believe your I timed you at about uh, 2 two twelve. So if you want to <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, so um, my concern is I am very active in my own community board, um, extremely active. And um, what we are seeing visited upon our neighborhoods, we would not wish on our worst enemies. And we believe that any adjustment to the zoning text amendment that makes these open facades a possibility is going to be unmitigatable noise. 
and I and I just wish you would reconsider even having a positive aspect to your resolution. Thank you so much for hearing me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mickey, for joining us. And as I see, there's no more questions or concerns from the public. I do see a note about um, a concern about a link. I'll look into that, Sherry. Is there any other uh, comments or concerns from the board, from board members? Yeah, I have one more question for Richard, please, if I can. Uh, Barry, 12, yes. CB12? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Richard, um, so it, it, it basically it says that the borough board does not support the removal of permanent rules. Um, uh, given the absence of rules that are intended to be promulgated by DOT to replace existing permanent rules. Now, my question is, um, what's the vehicle for DOT to come up with rules? Who's going to who's gonna draft those rules? How are those rules going to become law? Is, is the council going to vote on them? Is it going to be administrative law? What, what, what's the, um, how is this going to work? Who's going to who's going to draft these rules and how are these rules going to be become um, permanent? So Ben could weigh in as well, um, but there's a process called Kappa, right? So these are agency developed rules that are put out there. A uh, public hearing is held. Uh, there's a comment period, and then the agency decides on what the final rules would be. So rather than us all sitting back and waiting for the Department of Transportation to decide what they think would be a great idea of draft rules. You know, hopefully whatever they do is in consultation with agencies that understand aesthetics, such as city planning, agencies that understand snow removal, such as sanitation, agencies that understand cleanliness, such as sanitation, you know, on and on, right? Um, but we see these examples that were done in the emergency. We walk our streets. This is an opportunity for all of us over the next year or so to help formulate good and bad examples and inform DOT. So it would be great if DOT is proactive and reaches out to community boards. That's what would be a messaging of this resolution by us. But even without- They're not in charge right now. We're, if we're saying, uh, okay, DOT, give us rules, that means we're already uh, conceding to them that uh, this process will go over to DOT. Um, while I don't think, I mean, I don't think I any of the boards uh, are, 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 are actually willing to do that. Most of the boards that, uh, that I know of, and especially my board, um, wanted to remain the way it is and not give it over to the OD. I, I, I might be able to uh, give a little info on this. Um, so sidewalk cafes have always worked in tandem both zoning and admin code. So their zoning is what used to determine where sidewalk cafes are located and what type of cafe. I apologize, Ben. You're breaking up a little bit. Is it me or? Can everyone hear me? Can everyone hear Ben? Yeah. Uh, you're, you're breaking up intermittently. Intermittently. Up a little bit. Hear you. Yeah. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you. Um, so sidewalk cafe, sidewalk cafes, the, the rules of them existed in two places. So zoning dictated where sidewalk cafes could be located and what type. And then the rules on how they operated and looked were in admin code rules that were at the Department of Consumer Affairs, now known as DCWP. So the zoning text amendment is just suggesting we remove where sidewalk cafes can be located, saying that they can, you know, exist anywhere there's a restaurant. The admin code rules that is going to be updated and moved from DCA to the Department of Transportation. That is, um, there's a number of ways to like amend, uh, do a movement like that, but city council will have legislation that will be proposing that. And that's where they will go through the Kappa rulemaking process and there will be public hearings for that. So I, I think it's fine to have in the resolution suggestions on how 
the bureau board would like that um, to work out. Um, I think there's been some questions on, we don't want a removal of the zoning text until that process is complete. Um, I've heard that been suggested, but the zoning text, you know, that is not what is going to pass it over to DOT. Um, the the sidewalk cafe rules. Um, it's just amending on where they're located, and if you require zoning to also apply for a zoning for a sidewalk cafe. I don't know if that's clear. Um, I think I'm wrong. I do have a few. You know, in there on cleaning up the text, which go into the enclosure rule because some restaurants are defined that they have to be fully enclosed in order to be a restaurant that's where they were modifying that section to allow for operable windows and some you know access in and out of from restaurant to the outdoor dining structure if i'm wrong what didn't some some uh, some that wanted as a sidewalk if they have to go to bsa no wasn't there some Many, many years ago, but they had to renew it every 10 years and it had to be renewed. Am I something in my mind? Um, many, many years ago, um, but that was sort of the purpose of um, zoning and creating a framework of where they were located was that sidewalk cafes would go through a review process, but not a full ULERP. Okay, so basically what we're talking here, and I'm just going to leave it at that. What we're talking here, basically, if we have a, not a, not even a restaurant, we have a, let's say a, a bar, a sushi bar or a hot dog uh, <laughs> kind of store that never had any sit-in uh, would now all of a sudden, you know, get themselves a nice um, on the street, be able to sell sushi to eat on the street instead of to go or sell hot dogs or chicken sandwiches, whatever. They never had any sit-in. Um, customers would now be able to do that, right? Yeah, they would have sidewalk customers, right? That could uh, sit and eat. Why are we doing this exactly? Store. Well, yeah. it depends on where they were located. It's possible. Nobody explain to me why we're doing this. Why are we doing this? I mean, I understand that during the pandemic, we wanted to uh, save the food industry, we wanted to give people a chance to eat out. I understand that, but why are we doing this now? I can it's answer that. Yeah, yeah. So I can that. answer that. Yeah. Because, because the status quo are following the people that are, are investing, like these restaurant owners and these people, and they're not listening to the community at large. The people that are suffering, especially in my area, that they they come in here and they dump all over and then they go back to where they come and we gotta stick with all this crap. We should be dead in this. We don't want it. We know COVID was there. We it was good when it was good. It's over with. Let's keep moving forward. And Mr. Camacho, I know why we're doing this. Mr. Camacho, I know why we're against it. I'm asking the city to explain to us why they want to do this. I still haven't heard a, a good answer from anybody yet. I'm, I mean, it sounds like you don't. I mean, a lot of people have opinions about outdoor dining. No, our board voted unanimously, from... unanimously against it. Our board voted right. unanimously against it. Oh, and so is mine. So we put it, put it where you put it. Uh, so, oh, can I have, just, just have some order? Where you, where I, where I, you, I, you hold on. Work? One question. Can I just have some order? I I respect the, the need to have discourse. Um, it's a part of the process, but I like just to have it in order, please. So, Mr. Camacho, were you finished or, or Barry? Do you finish no, your I comment? Just, uh, I think uh, that wherever they want it, my, my, just my opinion, whoever mm -hmm. wants it and whatever community loves it and, and wants to continue with it, let them. But our community does not want it. We don't want it. Let's go back to where we were. We having a hard time. PT having a hard time controlling all this prostitution, smoking weed, or all these things that's going on, not to be dealing with the outdoor dining, with the fights and the shooting and the killing and the robberies. All right. And uh, it so, is possible under a DOT promulgated rules that it could be geographic limitations in there. But we first have to understand 
in the context of outdoor streets, wherever it would be allowed, what is an appropriate structure? You know, it, how temporary, if you're gonna have a snowstorm, you know, a lot of these things you can't simply shove away, right? Where do you put them if you need to have snow removal, for example? Richard, I, I agree with you and I, you know, it's up to the board how they want to include language on roadway cafes. I just want to be clear again, this, the zoning text amendment is limited to just sidewalk cafes and where people can apply for a sidewalk cafe. It will not legalize roadway structures at all. The zoning text amendment won't. I, I have a question. I have a question. So, um, order, order. Okay. Who's next? I'm sorry. Josephine? CB1. Josephine, CB1? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How, how does the city plan to uh, deal with the quality of life issue? That would result from an expanded open restaurant program. We're proposing to move the, you know, make the permanent program housed at the Department of Transportation that's staffing up um, to run a robust outdoor dining program. Perfect. That food inspections, reviewers, a return to process. I mean, we're right now, currently, it's, it's been a very long time. We've been in an emergency program. We're hoping to revert to an orderly process as it has it existed prior to COVID. The idea of proposing, you know, to answer to Barry's point, why are we proposing this? Outdoor dining has proved to be popular during the um, uh, COVID crisis, uh, necessity for many business owners. We think it should be, um, you know, accessible to more restaurants, which is why we're moving forward with the zoning text amendment. And by moving the licensing and reviewing and inspecting to the Department of Transportation, they're going to build out a more orderly system for reviewing restaurants and making sure they comply um, to outdoor to the rules that will be in outdoor. Yeah. It don't sound like you have a quality of life plan. The quality of life plan being responsive to communities complaints against restaurants. How do you, you, how you plan to deal? How do you plan to deal with 24 hour noise? Uh, people that's on wheelchairs and walkers can't access the street because they can't walk on the street. How do you plan for people going saying happy birthday from 12 noon in the day to four o'clock in the morning and the noise, the smoking? These are quality of life issues of people living in that neighborhood. They can't sleep and that affects a person's health. So you have to deal with the quality of life issues. It don't sound like you have a plan. I mean, those are, those are all fair points, right? So it's a combination of how these things operate, you know, the hours of operation, what should a structure look like? Should it look like the inside of a building, yet it's outside? I have some of them there, me, I'm in the Smith Street mm -hmm. corridor. Should it look like only umbrellas and not roofs? You know, what should the canopies be like? You know, uh, what should the low walls be like? Should they be low walls that are like a foot and a half high? Or should they be nine feet high like some restaurants have? These, This is the dialogue that has to happen. And if structure, if we figure out what the structure is, the quality of life timing. Well, what is the hour of operation? Can I take be a sports bar and mount the TV out there? Or no, you can't have that. That was meant for the emergency. You know, this is all the conversation that has to happen. Right. And I CB uh, 10 and I, I believe uh, community board 17. Thank you. Yes. So Thank you. So um, this is Josephine Beckman again from Community Board 10. So during our, our um, public hearing and presentation by the Department of City Planning and Department of Transportation, it was made abundantly clear that DOT could not proceed with the process until the Department of City Planning um, uh, resolution was made to eliminate the geographic um, limitations that are in the zoning text, which we strongly oppose um, because we feel that those geographic limitations are there for, for good reason, as well as the um, acoustic and, and noise provisions and, and removing that from the zoning text was problematic for our board. Also, the Department of Transportation made it abundantly clear that yes, because of the charter, that community boards would have input and a say 
continuing about sidewalk cafes, which is great because our issues really don't really stem so much with sidewalk cafes. We've never disapproved one. And our issues are with the, uh, with the roadway um, dining structures and acoustics and noise and quality of life issues. And DOT made it abundantly clear to us at our meeting that community boards would have zero input as it relates to street um, dining structures, which was very problematic to us, which led to our denial. So my question, I guess, to Ben is, I mean, is that correct that DOT cannot proceed with its rules until the zoning piece is out of the way? That the, the elimination of these geographic limitations right now prohibits DOT from promulgating rules for their outdoor dining program? Um, that's not true. I think that, you know, I, I wasn't at the Brooklyn 10 meeting. We're moving forward with the zoning text amendment because we're overhauling how we think outdoor dining will occur in the city um, for an expanded program. And we believe that zoning is not the best tool for saying who can and who cannot have a sidewalk cafe. Um, so, you know, it removes city planning from the process of side, DOT can go ahead and, you know, the city council could pass legislate, legislate and start the capital rulemaking process to move the sidewalk cafe program from DCWP to DOT and update those rules. Um, however, there would still be geographic limitations in zoning. Um, I think the idea would be that restaurants that don't have the appropriate zoning would still have to come to city planning to get a commercial overlay if they wanted to have a sidewalk cafe. Um, DOT will be able to create rules for roadway cafes regardless of if the zoning text amendment passes or not. The sidewalk cafes exist in the charter, therefore, you know, there it requires there to be community board review. At the time, it wasn't considered because of the way the roadway cafes were being um, created that to include community board review, but I believe that is evolving right now as we speak as the le legislation is getting this council where it's likely they'll they'll probably both go through community board review. Thank you. CB17. Hi, good evening, Joan Alexander Bakley Dean, CB17. I moved to ask a specific question about enforcement. Uh, because I, I mean, without choose without the clear zoning um, implementation or cl cl clear zoning notification or notice, I'm sorry, without clear zoning implementation, how then what will you be enforcing? Number one, number two, I I heard you say that there will be an increase to the number of of surveyors or or, or inspectors, people that re that react to issues around compliance, but someone put in the chat that there are only going to be 12 people. I was concerned about in enforcement before because there, there apparently isn't true enforcement now, much less if we increase the number of, of restaurants that that now are able to do the outdoor dining piece. So my question is, how are we going to be able to enforce with only 12 across all five boroughs? Number one. Number two, Without zoning, what will we be? What will what will we be reacting to in terms of enforcement if there is no clear and set uh, guide for how our our uh, businesses are supposed to be? I guess implementing this space. Well, there would be That's rules, good, right? And I just want to say it's 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 very I, it's very confusing and it's very technical. The zoning doesn't have the rules of operations of the cafes. That's always been in admin code rules that was housed at the Department of Consumer Affairs. Separately, that regardless of the zoning text amendment, they're proposing to move those admin code rules from Department of Consumer Affairs, now DCWP, to DOT and overhaul them. That that will cover the parameters of how a restaurant can use this space. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the agencies will work to come up with a, you know, strong enforcement plan 
um, you know, based on those parameters, if, if a restaurant is acting, you know, let's say late at night, it's likely the NYPD will still be um, called first. I know that's how a lot of people would react, but DOT is looking to, they threw out a number of inspectors. I think that that's subject to change. That, that's not a hard number. It certainly could be increased if it's decided that's necessary. Um, and they will be, um, you know, it, it's tough for me to answer these questions because DOT is not here, but if I recall from the CPC meeting, they would have inspectors um, at night and on weekends, not, not just during business hours. DOT's main role is to inspect that the structures are safe, um, you know, the outdoor dining is safe and to the, you know, overhauled code. The zoning text amendment, um, you know, I want to go back to the zoning. It really just determines where sidewalk cafes are allowed yes. to exist and, and by what type. There were three different types of cafes. So we wanted to propose preview, you know, how the city was thinking about the permanent open restaurants program, um, a lot more, you know, has happened. You've seen that. Um, I think some people that are referencing the 12 inspectors saw the sort of updated presentation that was given to the CPC on Monday. Um, but, you know, the zoning text amendment, there aren't, there aren't rules about what um, a cafe, like, like operating hours doesn't exist in zoning. Um, nor does no, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I do. I do need to interrupt. I need to, I need to interject for a quick second, if you don't yeah. mind. In terms, of, so when I'm referring to zoning, I thought that zoning would would guide the build out of these spaces. Wouldn't zoning imp, um, impact where and how these structures are built? Zoning doesn't affect the streets themselves, mm. right? So. Mm -hmm. The whole idea was obviously the emergency rules affect the structures somewhat, you know, a lot of them still probably don't meet the emergency regs, but the whole idea of the Kappa adopted rules would say what these structures look like. Maybe they won't be structures at all. Maybe it'll simply be, you could have tables and chairs and umbrellas and a couple of mm -hmm. security perimeter, whatever to pe keep people safe. You know, we don't know. Right, but whatever would be allowed to be placed in a street would be pursuant to whatever gets the end product of the CAFA process. And the only way you could have something in front of your restaurant is to actually be a restaurant. And other than that, and not a bar. Well, no, a re eating and drinking establishment. So it could be a bar too, unless CAFA rules say otherwise. So can this we request that it be more descriptive? To is is that possible? And then I I, I see the rest of my time. Th this is all subject to a process that hasn't even happened yet. So okay. again, we have what we see in front of us. We know what we like. We know what we don't like, and we should use what we like and don't like to feed the process to the extent that people want to make. Uh, you know, it's time and effort. But you know, if there are members of the board that want to take this on and say here's examples of only horrible and not even anything good that's fine but giving feedback to government's important okay thanks okay um so with that being said i don't see any more comments from um board members i let me just check one more time um, and I would uh, just like to state there was a concern, a comment that was kind of brought forth that I just like to state for the record. And I believe it was a concern regarding um, as we come as a come out of COVID and things open back up and people start driving and people start moving around, um, the capacity is going to kind of change in certain communities, and the city should be be prepared or have a plan in place to kind of handle those changes ahead of time. Um, I can someone had brought that to my attention. I just wanted to kind of state it onto the point in regards to, to capacity um, for that to be taken consideration to have a plan of how enforcement is going to take place. Um, another uh, point I would like to uh, kind of make is just to express that this resolution that is being put forth 
this evening is only uh, a recommendation. Um, and also as well uh, as your individual board, as a member of the board, uh, you are free to vote for it, um, against it, and have a consensus as, as a board. And as, is, and, and as individual boards, you also have a say on the matter too as well. Uh, do we have any more questions from the board before we move forward in particular? Because we'd like to close out the public comment the public hearing at this point. Uh, we got a good consensus from the public and board members, and we'd like to move forward with um, voting on this resolution, whether you vote for it or against it. Once again, that's based on your assessment of uh, what your board or your member uh, support or feedback that you have given. Um, would we like to recap that resolution, which is calling for disapproval with modifications. Um, I would not repeat the modifications unless anyone would like me to repeat the modifications. No. No. Would, is there a need to repeat the modifications? Okay. Um, I, I'd like to call a motion uh, to the board, right? Uh, for restaurant and cafe tax amendment for disapproval of the proposal with modifications. Joan Alexander Bakardine moves to have a disapproval of the open cafe text amendment with modifications. Teresa Scabo, CB 15 seconds, uh, Joan's motion. Thank you. And with that uh, on the floor, Michelle would like to go through uh, a uh, roll call with all the community boards uh, for your vote on this um, motion that's on the floor. So you can begin, Michelle. Community board one. No. Community board two. Abstain. Com community board three. Yes. Community board four. No, really loud, no. Yes. C community board okay. five. Community Board 6. Community Board 7. Community Board 8. No. Community Board 9. Community Board 10. Yes. Community Board 11. Yes. Community Board 12. Yes. Community Board 13. Yes. Community Board 14. Abstain. Community Board 15. Yes. Community Board 16. Yes. Community Board 17. Community Board 18. Council mm -hmm. Member 11. Is there a vote for 17? <laughs> yes, I apologize. I was muted. My Thank, vote was yes. Thank you. Council member Levin. Council member Reynoso. Council member Combo. Council member Cornegie. No. Council member Diaz. Council member Menchaca. Council member Menchaca. Ting, are you there? Council member Lander. Council member Eugene. Council member Amprey Samuels. Yes. Council member Barron. Council member Brannon. Council member Yeager. Council member Lewis. Abstain. Council member Mizell. No. Council member Traga. Count uh, Borough President's office. Yes. And yes, Serena. How many no no's? 
five no and two abstain. abstain two abstain three abstain yeah oh i'm sorry three abstain okay um with that being said the motion um carries um and we will draft up a resolution for a disapproval with modification for restaurant and cafe tax amendment. Um, that concludes our business on this item. We'll now move on to um, any uh, our next item, which is any unfinished business from the board. And being none, any board members? Okay. Um, and any um, new business? Okay. All right. Um, just a quick up. Oh, there is. Hello. Hi. Hi, uh, Jeff from CB13. I think it's appropriate on the new business just to talk about uh, the ferry landing that's coming to uh, Coney Island Creek. And uh, we had a public hearing with DEC and EDC on it was a, there were an issue about the environmental. Uh, contamination during the creek during the dredging project and basically the controversy is about an oil slick that appeared that the Coast Guard had said was due to the dredging. Our two elected officials have different opinions on this issue but these issues were not cleared up with the public hearing. It was an opportunity there were approximately 130 people on the Zoom uh, general board meeting and the uh, public wanted answers which were not given at this meeting. Another meeting will be scheduled with DEC and EDC to try to get definite answers. So I just wanted to have this on the record that uh, Community Board 13 has this issue with the Coney Island Creek landing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for sharing. Um, I also received a notice from the Department of Finance. They had asked me uh, just um, to give this important notice regarding the, the lien sale reminder. Um, and they said, uh, I guess action will be taken by December 16th, 2021. Um, I'll see if I can circulate to the board. Um, let me see, let me see if it's here. Um, to the so I'll just send an email out with this information from the Department of Planning um, uh, in regards to how one can make payments and to enter into a payment agreement, um, submit a hardship for COVID-19, submit for emergency repair um, certification, and qualify for the property tax uh, exemption. Um, and I guess that date, and submit declarations that your property was damaged during um, Hurricane Ida. So I'll circulate this information to the board. It came in uh, this evening, so I'll make sure you guys get that information. Um, our last meeting is December the, the 7th. Um, between that, you'll be hearing from us. Uh, just to give you an update, um, we are in the pro process of of transitioning um, out. Um, any business that have occurred with the board will be transitioned accordingly with the incoming um, new board president. Um, and that includes, you know, rep record keeping um, uh, the boards and there'll be meetings that will be going on um, as we try to make sure that we have a smooth transition. Um, if there's any outstanding housekeeping business for individual board members, which I understand one of them is actually some membership as we wait some for, for final approval for uh, a few um, for a few appointments, they will be handled and they'll be they'll be resolved before the uh, uh, before we leave here in December. Uh, in addition to that. Uh, if there, were, there was also a question or concern in regards to people submitting membership applications, the new application will be updated once it probably, if it could get it approved uh, by next week, it'll be up on the website for anyone who termed is expiring next year to submit their application um, in. Um, the process in itself at this moment, uh, you'll know that if there's any changes once um, that new borough president gets into uh, gets uh, take over. But in that meantime, we should conduct business as usual. 
And um, once that link is up and running, um, Hercules will circulate it to the board members. Um, I don't know if anyone have any questions, um, but other than that, that's all the new business that we we have. If there's any information, will be uh, myself, uh, Melody, uh, the deputy board president, uh, Tanya will be in contact with uh, board members. And no questions. Okay. Thank you. So that concludes. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. Uh, I know some of you are actually traveling to SOMO, so I heard. <laughs> if you are, have a safe travel. And we'll thank see you guys again at our final meeting, which is our well, final meeting on the board president Adams on December the 7th. Thank you so oh, much. Can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Yeah, Alexander, yeah, motion to adjourn. To adjourn. The meeting. Oh, that was right. Second. <laughs> First, who, who motion? Joan Alexander Bacher Dean. Okay. Second. At the spoon. Oh, okay. All those in favor at 7:45. The meeting is adjourned. All right. Aye. 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 Thank you guys. Have a good evening. Good night. Good, night. good evening, good all. Night. Good night, everybody. Good evening, everyone. And thank you, Ben. If you're still there, thank you very much. Enjoy the holiday, guys. Bye.